Growing up as a huge fan of college hoops on the West Coast, I started to notice something strange. With years passing by and new teams, coaches, and players hoisting the NCAA tournament trophy, this thought only got deeper. It has to be one of the strangest droughts that we're seeing right now in US sports, and maybe, just maybe, it's a curse. If you enjoy this type of content, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share with friends, sit back, relax, do whatever you gotta do to get loose, and let's get started. The year is 1997, and the Arizona Wildcats out of the Pac-10 make one of the most improbable runs to become the NCAA champions behind coach Lute Olsen and also Miles Simon. And just two years prior in 1995, their conference foe UCLA had won the title themselves. So you could say at this time in the late 90s that basketball on the western side of the United States was thriving. Flash forward 27 years from that 1997 Arizona team to today in 2024, and no team from the western side of the United States has won the NCAA basketball title. The closest we've ever gotten on the map was Waco, Texas when the Baylor Bears won it in 2021. Other than that, we've had teams from Connecticut, North Carolina, Florida, New York, and many more win the title. You might be saying, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is that we've never seen this long of a geographical drought in any of the major sports in the United States. Think about it like this. For good college and pro sports teams, 27 years is a long way to go without a title for just one team. Now imagine a whole section on a map of the United States. Now I do get it that due to population density, there are less Division I schools on the western side of the United States compared to the Midwest and the East, but it's not like those teams from the West haven't had their chance and just ran into straight up bad luck. In fact, there's been 10 instances since the 1997 where teams from the West make the Final Four, but come up just short. In the very next year in 1998, the Final Four consisted of Utah out of the WAC and also Stanford from the Pac-10. Unfortunately, number three seeded Stanford got bounced out by Kentucky, but Utah as a three seed beat number one North Carolina, then faced Kentucky in the national title, but came up short and lost by nine points. In the 2001 season, the Arizona Wildcats reappeared in the NCAA national title as a two seed, but they lost to Duke under Coach K. There was a little bit of a West Coast drought for the next five seasons, but in 2006, we saw Blue Blood UCLA play in the title against Florida, and guess what? They lost the game coming up just, just short for the West yet again. So in a 10 year stretch, Three of those teams from that region were so close to winning the title, but they couldn't. There was a lid on the rim. Is this a curse? 2017 was another huge year for the West Coast. We had Oregon out of the Pac-12, and then we had a WCC school, Gonzaga, the start of the Mark Few craze. What an amazing program. This time they finally made their first national championship. Oregon got bounced in the first game of the Final Four against North Carolina, but the national championship was a one-seeded Gonzaga and a one-seeded North Carolina. And you guessed it, Gonzaga came up short, UNC won the title, and yet another year where two teams from the West cannot make it happen. In 2021, we had a Final Four matchup between number one-seeded Gonzaga and an 11-seeded Cinderella UCLA, so two of the West Coast teams going at it, that's a crime. The Zags got the job done against the Bruins on an insane buzzer beater from Jalen Suggs, but they were unable to beat Baylor and they came up short again. 2023, just last year, we had an unsuspected San Diego State five seed reach the national title game where they got ran against UConn and still no champions from the Western part of the United States. But maybe, just maybe guys, 2024, would be the year where the curse and the streak would be snapped. Out of the field of 68, 14 of those teams resided in the West, and I'm gonna name all of them because I feel like it. San Diego State, BYU, Washington State, St. Mary's, Grand Canyon, New Mexico, Nevada, Arizona, Long Beach State, Colorado, Utah State, Gonzaga, Oregon, and Colorado State. And you wanna know how many of them made the Sweet 16? Three. Three out of the 14 did, although not very many of them were high seeds. There were disappointments like BYU as a six seed. Oh my, a lot of people thought BYU should have even been a five, and they pooped the bed. So the three teams in the Sweet 16, Arizona, 
San Diego State, and Gonzaga. And funny thing was, I was going to make this video before the Sweet 16 and talk about these three teams' chances of possibly winning the title, but tonight, Arizona went down and also San Diego State. San Diego State, I'm not going to go too hard on you because you made the national title last year and also you got blitzed by UConn, the best team in the country. There's no shame in that. I want to say real quick before I go on a tangent, Gonzaga is playing tomorrow against number one seed of Purdue as a five. This video is going up on that same day, so who knows? Let's just expect Gonzaga to be out. The reason why the West is suffering so bad in NCAA basketball is because teams like Arizona choke consistently. And your blue blood, your quote blue blood UCLA has not been seriously relevant for years. Arizona, you claim to be a basketball school. You haven't made the final four since that 1997 team. It's almost 10 years since you've even reached the Elite Eight, you've had multiple embarrassing first round exits like in 2018 to 13 seeded Buffalo. And of course, Princeton just last year and this year with all the talent reloaded roster, you had guys develop and you couldn't even make it past the Sweet 16 against a six seed. This is what's wrong with Western basketball. I don't have a bone to pick with Arizona. I am just pointing it out. I am tired of seeing these teams with all this talent fail on the biggest stages and not even on the biggest stage because you can't even get to the final four. I did take some shots at UCLA and you might be thinking, well, they made the final four in 2021, back-to-back -back Sweet 16 appearances. What are you talking about? This program is supposed to be on the same level as Duke and Kansas. And when's the last time they won the national championship? 1994. And before that, you have to go back to the 70s where they were consistently relevant with coach John Wooden when my dad, when my dad was a little boy in diapers. That's how far you have to go back for when this program was elite. UCLA has not done anything recently and people still give them that quote, blue blood title. No, you are not even a blue blood at this point. I wouldn't throw Gonzaga on this list because remember just 20 years ago, they were a small mid-major program. They had to work years and years to get their program up to this point with Coach Mark Few. Again, they choked in some big games against some good teams. However, Gonzaga, I would totally clear them from this conversation. I am 21 years old, and I hope in my lifetime I could see a team from the West, where I am from, win an NCAA basketball title. I seriously do. I don't want to go out sad for the rest of my life. Let me know in the comments. When do you guys think this streak's gonna end? 2050, 2070? Is this a curse? Why do these teams lose in big games? Who's the worst program? Let it all go in the comments. Yo, we're on the MacBook camera right now. I did my initial recording at my house and my setup, then I left to go do work. I like going to the classroom, kind of getting my stuff done, and I forgot to record the outro, so we're doing the outro right now. If you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, share with your homies, share with your mom. I've been Saturday shenanigans and I don't sleep until May. It's March. We're locked in and I'll see you guys soon.